Hello everybody, welcome to this new sewing tutorial where we're going to be making this bag. This is a weekend bag, so it should be big enough to gather all your belongings for a little weekendly escapade. And this is everything that I put in there. The bag features a little flap on top to hide and secure the zipper. We're going to be making the shoulder strap ourselves and then there is a little external pocket and an internal pocket and as you can see the bag is not lined okay let's already move on to the pattern and the supplies that you will need this is the body of the bag made of the front back and bottom we've got a strap that is four centimeters wide the sides are here with some strap 2.5 centimeters wide and the little D-rings that are also as wide as the strap. I've also made notches here in the middle of my parts. These are the top parts that are going to be on each side of the zipper. I've already marked little dots for the placement of the snap buttons later and the zipper should be about 60 centimeters long. Here is the pocket, I've already finished one of the edge, which is going to be made into a hem later on. Here are my snap buttons and I have here a bit of tape that I'm going to be using to cover the edges. This is my external pocket, I'm also going to be using a little bit of the tape to cover one edge and this is my flap on which I've already marked the placement for the snap buttons as well. And my flap was cut twice in my external fabric and in some lining. We are also gonna be making the shoulder belt ourselves and I'm gonna be showing everything you need later on in the video. If you want to use the chapters to jump right there, feel free to do so. The first step is to sew the external pocket. So I take the body of the bag and the pocket. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna identify the middle of the body I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to be drawing a line 14 centimeters from the center of the bag in between the straps and then I mark the middle of this line. I also mark the middle of my pocket and then I take my tape and I'm going to be covering the upper edge of the pocket with the tape and I sew. Once this is done, I'm going to take my pocket and place it on top of the body of the bag, right sides together, against this line that we drew earlier, and I'm sewing the two together. Then I fold back. I'm going to press down, and our pocket is basically done. We're moving to the internal pocket. I drew a line two centimeters from the edge. I'm going to fold the upper edge, press down, and sew the two layers together to make a hem. I folded my piece of fabric so as to create a pocket and I'm going to be sewing the two layers together on the sides in the seam allowance. Then I add some of the tape that we took for the external pocket and I cover the row edge that way. and you can now add your stab button. I'm gonna now take care of the handles. So I have this long piece of strap, which is 133 centimeter long. I'm gonna sew the ends together so as to create a sort of very long loop. I'm gonna be folding my loop in half and marking the middle. And once I've marked the middle, I use this middle that I place against my first seam. And I'm going to be marking the middle of my half. I'm going to be using these notches that I made in the middle of the bag and I mark the middle of the straps here. I place my straps 
using these notches, these markers that I made while folding my strap together just 30 seconds ago. I'm going to pin my straps in place and then I'm going to sew. And you don't want to sew all the way up. Huh? Use the markings on the pattern to know where to stop. And this is what I get. As you can see, the edges of the pocket have been covered. And also I use the same thread color as the, um, the straps. Uh, I should have used another thread uh, for the back of the seam. Anyways, so since I've marked the middle of the middle earlier, I have the center of the handle marked already. I'm going to count seven centimeters from each side of this marker. I'm going to fold and I'm going to sew. And this is what I get once my handle is done. Okay, so this is what I have now. Everything is nice and clean. And now on the wrong side of the fabric is the moment to sew my internal pocket, which I'm going to sew in the seam allowance. Okay, let's take care of the flap for a second. The only reason why I took two different fabrics is because my external fabric is kind of thick and I didn't want to have too much thickness under my needle, so I took a sort of lining that's a thinner fabric. I'm going to lay my two parts right sides together and I'm going to sew. I'm just going to forget to sew the long side here. This is what I get. I trim the seam allowance in the corners. And now I'm going to understitch my lining to the seam allowance. I only do it in the straight lines. I'm not giving myself a hard time and, and doing it in the corners. Okay, I have pressed down. This is what I get. Let's set this aside and take care of the upper parts that are going to bear the zipper. So my zipper right now is 80 centimeters long. So it's much too long since uh, the size should be about 60 centimeters. I'm going to be taking some little scrap fabric that I put in my bin to add on each end of my zipper. I want like two centimeters of fabric at each end of my zipper once my bag is done. So I'm going to be cutting little pieces of fabric that are going to be four centimeters long with a, a seam allowance of one centimeter. So here I'm making little marks three centimeters from the edge of the fabric. Here are my little pieces of fabric that I've cut already. I've also made a mark one centimeter from the edge. I am pinning these parts. So here they are pinned right sides together. And on the other side, because of the little pieces of uh, plastic, I couldn't pin right sides together. So I'm going to be folding and pin wrong side against right side. And I sew. And this is what I get. All right, I'm just going to mark the middle of the zipper here. I place it on one of the two upper pieces. And I sew my zipper to my first upper piece. 
And now it's time to top stitch. Normally it'd be time to top stitch. However, I ran into a little bit of an issue. Um, you're gonna understand in a bit. These are my parts all finished, all top stitched, super clean. I was very happy with myself. And then I laid them on top of my sides on which I had already put my D-ring, which by the way is not placed in the right location. And when I placed my top part on top of my sides, I realized that my sides were bigger than my top parts. I was like, what is going on here? I thought I made a mistake in the pattern maybe, so I checked and everything was okay. And my mistake was that I actually did not respect one centimeter of seam allowance on each side of the zipper because I wanted my fabric to come really close to the zipper teeth. And also because my fabric is thick, even afterwards when I corrected my mistake and I respected one centimeter of seam allowance, the fabric was still too short because of the thickness of the fabric. So in the end, I unsued everything and I respected only about five millimeters of seam allowance and the measurements were finally correct. So I could move on to top stitching this time. I also added some little strips of fabric at each extremities of my zipper. It's useless, don't do it. Because right now we're also adding the little straps um, that are going to be bearing the D-rings and they can be used to pull the zipper. So I'm cutting strips of straps that are 8 centimeters long. I insert my D-rings and I'm going to be putting them in the middle of the edge that bears the right angle corners and not the rounded one. I took the flap again and I added my snap buttons. So I'm not going to be sewing the flap right now to um, the upper part of the bag, but I want to take care of the fact that the lining is sticking out a little bit compared to the shell fabric. So I'm going to grab my ruler and my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut this extra bit of lining that is sticking out. And here I've cut the extra lining part, finished the edge, and then I drew a line two centimeters from the edge. I folded my fabric on one centimeter and that's what I get. And so, as I said, I'm not going to be sewing right now. I'm going to be adding the sides first. Before sewing the sides to the upper part, you want to finish the edges, which I didn't do right now, but you're going to see. And then we sew the parts right sides together. Once this is done, I fold my seam allowance in the direction of the sides and I'm going to be sewing close to the edge. As you can see, we have my D-ring and also this little strap of tape that I put and it's not really aesthetic to have both of them and also useless, but let's stop stitch. This is what I get. Okay, let's add the flap for real this time. So I'm going to clip them so as to get the perfect placement for the seam. I'm going to be pinning my flat in place to the layer underneath and then I'll do a first seam close to the edge and then another one like between five and one centimeter from this first seam. Actually, I did only um, the width of a presser foot between the two seams, but because my seam allowance was one centimeter in the end, when I'm folding up the flap, I can see the seam allowance underneath. So I recommend that you do your second seam maybe one centimeter from the first one, if that makes any sense. Right, this is done. As you can see, the two seams are parallel. And now I'm gonna be assembling my upper part and the body of the back together. So I pin all around. I add as many pins as I can. And then I'm gonna be sewing, respecting one centimeter of seam allowance. Don't hesitate to add notches in the middle if you find it necessary. So that's what I get once I've pinned as much as I could because I don't have enough pins. 
And now I'm gonna sew. If you have difficulties sewing in the corners, know that you are not alone. Sometimes what I do is I sew the straight lines with the sewing machine and then I do the corners just by hand. This is what I get once I've sewed the two parts together and now I'm going to finish the edges using my overlocker. I have to say that it's a bit of a lazy option to finish the edges that way. Another option would be to cover your raw edges with bias tape or this tape that I have, a uh, twill tape I think it's, it's called. Look at this, it looks much better, I'm already regretting this. I can always go back and correct that if I want. I turn the bag inside out and basically the bag is done. Okay, now it's time to move on to making the shoulder strap. So I'm going to be using footage from another video. So I've got a rectangular ring, a sliding ring, two musketeers, and then on the left some iron lip pads or something. They will enable me to connect a 4 cm wide strap to a 2.5 wide musketeer, you're gonna see. So I take an ironly thingy, I insert it into one musketeer, then I insert the strap in the rectangular ring, I cut and I'll attach the ironly pad and musketeer to the end. So I've actually sewed this like that before before putting this on. I press down. I've traced my seam line with a, a pencil because I'm not sure I can go straight. And I sew. So here I didn't show, I forgot, as you can see on one end of the strap, it's already done. I had the iron lee go through the musketeer and attached to the end of the strap. For the opposite end, you take the sliding rectangle and here I'll let you observe the path of the belt. I think it's better than words. I pull and at the end I'll fold twice to hem and I sew in place. The bag is fully done. I have to say that this is way too long. There we go. Which means that I'm gonna do this over again and then take this little strap that I have and do it here, like this. You know, you take the measurements like that. Put a pin and then remove it. And then we'll have to try and sew it with the machine. This is so small that I don't know if we can do it with the machine. Okay, so that's the wrong side and this is the right side. 